Joining me is Barry Knapp. He's Ironside's macroeconomics managing partner and director of research. Barry, it's good to see you again. Um, QE's over officially. As of this weekend, rate hikes are about to begin. Where does that leave stocks? Well, we had um, <clears throat> what what I expected, as you as you just referenced, which was the typical 10 to 12 percent correction when the Fed does make their big first significant policy pivot. So for me, we've had an appropriate adjustment to the Fed starting to normalize policy. Um, so for I think in part, you know, we talked about a couple of the different channels in the way uh, tightening monetary policy or loose policy, for that matter, affects the markets. There's expectations of the rate path. Well, that's been pretty well, uh, you know, we've made a pretty significant adjustment there. Obviously, we've had a fantastic move higher in two-year note yields, for example. There's also real rates. Now, we had a big move uh, tighter in real rates. The 10-year part of the curve moved from 110, negative 110 basis points all the way to 40 and change, but it's backed up on the, uh, the Russian invasion. So there's some vulnerability to a snapback there. But there, for me, the real issue is the volatility channel. Sure. And that, that volatility channel comes because the Fed buys 100% of the supply of mortgage-backed securities, re, was reinvesting and still reinvesting 50 to $60 billion a month. When that risk gets transferred back to the sell side, that is going to cause a big move in, in the yes. value at risk measure and vol in general. But we had the move index, which is short-term vol, have a fantastic spike higher, um, went to 1.8 standard deviations above its long-term mean. For, so for all, put all those things together, I think we're in a position to rally out of Wednesday's meeting because we've had this appropriate adjustment, because we've had a big move in expectations around rate policy, and we've even moved the least appreciated, but for me, biggest risk, which is you know, is interest rate vol and how that permeates out across the other asset classes. Got it. So again, you think that we could actually see maybe a little bit here of sell the news by the fact when the Fed actually hikes on Wednesday. Let me zoom out, though, and ask you a bigger question that I'm hearing and people are starting to ask all the time right now, Barry, because they're worried about stagflation. Can you and should you own U.S. equities right now? What about how equities performed in the 1970s or as we've seen during, you know, whatever past period of inflation you want to pick? What about stagflation if we're heading right. that direction instead? What about the yield curve? What, I mean, can you own U.S. equities for the next couple of years here and actually do pretty well? Oh, I absolutely think you can. But there is some, you know, some caveats to what I'm going to say. There always is, right? But <clears throat> I'm not an economist, but a strategist. Nonetheless, if you look at the period of the 60s when we went from a disinflationary regime like we had in the 2010s, the 50s and the 10s were very similar from a monetary policy, uh, regular bank regulatory policy perspective. And we got into that reflationary regime in the 60s. We had stronger nominal growth. We had faster earnings growth. Earnings growth picked up from 8 or 9% in the 50s, which is what we had in the 10s, to 15% in the 60s. The only the risk is that we jump straight to the 70s and we get into a you know a real rapid inflation environment. So the, the key really is that inflation settles down to something around or less than four percent. I actually think the corporate sector is fine in that environment. The bond market's not, but yeah. the corporate sector could be. So I don't think stagflation is a big issue. I know people have been focused on uh, issues like falling consumer confidence. For me, those are much better political indicators than they are. Um, economic indicators. In fact, this morning, the New York Fed survey came out and said spending plans hit their highest level ever since they wow. started that survey back in 2013. So I'm not really worried about the consumer's ability to absorb higher gasoline prices. I think they'll be fine. I think the sec there's two second order effects from the Russian invasion. One is higher inflation, to be sure, and that's a problem. We just discuss that. But it's also going to mean higher capital investment. The whole deglobalization deglobalization theme is becoming really pervasive. That's a net positive for U.S. equities. I think it'll take places like Europe longer <laughs> to get around to that. Okay. Watch Germany. They'll be the likely first mover away from being reliant on exports. But, you know, for places like China, which I've been hugely bearish on, it's going to be a long time for them to be able to make any sort of adjustment. So in that environment, a reflationary regime, a deglobalization regime, I think you do want to be in U.S. equities, but you want to be in the cyclical sectors, not tech, um, and surely not the defensive sectors like Staples either.